Hi guys, Jangro here. Welcome to this next episode of Valhalsia 5, in which we're going to take a look at getting started with Forbidden and Arcanus, which is an amazing magic and rituals mod. It's got a ton of stuff in the world, lots of tools and armor, and a bunch of later game things to strive for. There's so much to cover in this mod, we're not going to try to do it all. And let's kind of do a getting started guide to help you progress with Valhalsia 5. There's some stuff in Forbidden and Arcanus, which is needed to get started in other mods in this pack. In this episode, let's progress to the Hephaestus Forge, which is a multi-block crafting structure. And along the way, we'll get this Clebano Forge going as well. And in the end, we'll see how to craft Eternal Stella. So stick around. And remember, we stream this world every week on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jangro. And please hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much. Okay, let's start out by taking a look where we're going, which is to get some Eternal Stella. And the reason we want Eternal Stella is it basically turns anything destructible, anything that takes damage, and gives it an indestructible enchantment on it. So anything that takes damage, we can basically make it last forever. So this is a really great thing to get. The way we make this is with Hephaestus smithing on a Hephaestus table. And this is a whole big multi-block structure that requires gilded darkstone. And you gild darkstone with Deorum. And in order to make Deorum ingots, we need arcane crystal dust and Mundabator dust. And Mundabator dust is made, we have to craft that with arcane crystal dust and some more cheap, more easily gotten things. But phantom membranes in here, and those aren't easy to get. But I'm going to show you in this episode how we can get all of the Deorum ingots with only a single phantom membrane. So you don't have to use Mundabitur dust for every single day or a minget that you want to craft. We just need the first one. So I'll show you how to get there. But let me first show you what we're going to find in the world. We've got this arcane crystal ore. If we mine this, we can get more than one drop per. It's a great source of XP. All right. The next thing you're going to see around is expetrified ore. These are pretty common. You'll see them, especially because they're really glowy. Again, break these with fortune pickaxe and you'll get multiple Darkstone's everywhere down by bedrock. So this is really easy to find once you get yourself down to bedrock. We're going to need a lot of this. Stella Arcanum is where we get the Stellarite piece. If we take a look again at the Eternal Stella recipe, we need three X Petrified Ore orbs, one Stellarite piece, and a diamond in this Hephaestus Forge. Now, you got to be careful when you break this, however, because it explodes like TNT. So you can't be far enough away not to be hit. So you want to be as far away as possible to break it. And I'm not going to break this one because it's going to blow up my whole base here. So we'll get one of those later. Runic Deep Slate, also good source of XP. Uh, you're going to need some, some runes for some of the stuff we're going to be doing. Now, in order to get this uh, Mundabador, we need some Arcane Crystal Dust. And in order to get Arcane Crystal Dust, we need to forge the Arcane Crystal in this Clebano Combustion Forge. But in order to make the Combustion Forge... It's a multi-block structure, really easy to make. It's all dark stone, just with different cuts in the stone cutting table. And also this Clebano core, which is just more dark stone around Blast Furnace. So all these ingredients are easy. However, we have to activate it with one piece of Mundabador dust. And we can't get Mundabador dust without getting Arcane Crystal dust. So we're going to need to go find some Arcane Crystal dust first. And the other way to do that is by finding this dust spec. So that's out in the world. And we're going to go find that. And we're going to go look at a few of the other things that are out in the world, including this Edelwood log or this Edelwood tree. And one more thing that we're going to need to find is an orchid. And if we can grow golden orchid, we can, we can harvest Deorum ingots from a golden orchid. To get golden orchid seeds, we need to find a yellow orchid and combine it with a Deorum ingot. So we just need to make one Deorum ingot and we can get these golden orchid seeds and then we'll have all the Deorum that we could ever hope for. So let's head out into the world and find all these things. Okay, let's find a dark forest. Dark forests are where you find Edelwood trees. Here's Excusez-moi working on the mine colony. And I think right up here somewhere, we have a dark forest. There it is, right near this woodland mansion. Okay, right down here. There's one right there. Gotta be careful with that. Here we go. Here's an Edelwood log in the wild. Now these spots right here that have oil dripping out of them, if you hit those with a with a bottle, you can get a bottle of oil and you can craft that into black dye. But well, we don't need that right now. Let's just harvest this thing. The Edelwood branches you can get with silk touch. Yes, you can get those with silk touch. 
And now I've got these carved edelwood logs, edelwood logs. These can all be turned into edelwood planks. And if we grab a couple of logs here quick and make a crafting table. It's that scary sound. Oh, it's an LA. Look. I think we can capture an LA in an Elwood bucket. Let's see if we can catch it. Where is it? Got it. Now I've got a bucket of a lay. So Edelwood buckets, you can capture all kinds of mobs. That was really lucky. Chickens, slime, different fish, bees. Capture bees like this. So that's pretty neat. You can also just use an Edelwood bucket too. It's a, it's a bigger bucket. What did I do with my crafting table? Let's bring that with us. Let's get some more of these Edelwood logs. If we break these here, we get Edelwood sticks without silk touch. But you'll find these all over in dark forests. Let's make one more Edelwood bucket. We'll see. We can see how it's good for getting multiple buckets of, of water. Okay, we're heading this way next. Okay, so with an Edelwood bucket, we can grab multiple buckets of water. Two, three, oops, two, three, four. So now we've got four buckets of water. The next thing we need to find is a Nipah plant. And Nipah plants are found on those floating islands if you've seen those around. So let's go find one of those. Here we go. Here's a floating island. We can land on it. Did it. Okay, so right in the middle of this island is a Nipah plant. And we just grab it. Let's harvest it. So these floating islands, you can, you can see them in the sky. So they're easy to find. What's not so easy to find is the ground versions of these. Let's go see if we can find one of those. And we can find those in forests like this one right here. Ouch. And if we look around, we might get lucky. Here we go. There's one right here. So right in the middle, it's exactly the same layout as the island. These kind of leaning trees made with oak wood. And in the middle is an, another... Let's grab that. While we're here, Edelwood buckets can also capture chickens, I believe. And I need some chickens. So let's make a couple more. Let's see if we can catch a couple chickens. We have a bucket of chicken. Colonel Sanders would be proud. All right. Do we have another one? I know there was another one around here. There we go. It's a baby chicken. Can I get a baby? I can. All right. We've got a baby. And there's chicken nest. Hmm. Okay, the last thing we need to find in the world is the yellow orchid. And we need to find a flower forest for that. And luckily, we've got one right near our home. Okay, here is a flower forest. And around here, we should be able to find some yellow orchids. Here they are. We really only need one of these, but let's grab a few. Okay, and now we'll head back home and use all this stuff. 
There's the colony. I'm going the wrong direction. Home is this way. And if you're wondering what I'm flying with, this is a Ars Nouveau book called Takeoff. And if you just find it in a loot chest somewhere, it's basically Elytra. And combined with the jetpack for mechanism, it's amazing. Basically a jet plane. Okay, so first thing we need to do is plant this, these Nipa plants that we got. We'll just put these right over here. One, two, and in a couple minutes, just a couple of real life minutes, these will grow. And we're going to get the specs, the arcane crystal dust specs from that. So we're going to have to wait for nine of these to grow so we can get one arcane crystal dust. With that arcane crystal dust, we're going to make a Mundabitur dust. And then we won't have to grow any more crystal dust because we can activate the forge, the Klebano forge with that. So these will just take a couple minutes. We'll be right back. All we're waiting for those, let's release our chickens. I don't think I want to release the LA yet, but chickens, we can do that. Put them in this pen right here. All right, let's check and see if these have grown. They have. So if we just right click on those, we get two of these arcane crystal dust specks. So we just need seven more. We'll let these grow and we'll be back when we've got nine. Okay, we've now got seven arcane crystal dust specks. We just need two more to grow. While we're doing that, we can, let's look at this. The cherry tree is a forbidden arcanus block. And these are actually thin cherry logs. They're pretty cool. So usually these trees are mixed with th regular and thin. The thin logs give you only two planks instead of four. That's, that's kind of neat. And we've got these flower vines over here, which I think would be pretty cool for decorating. Maybe we'll dress up our forbidden and arcanus room with some of that stuff. And these cherry leaf carpets are cool too. While we're waiting, a couple other... Let's keep it within view. A couple of other cool things that are, are in this pack. There's a quantum catcher. So once we have a block of crystal, arcane crystal and a spawner scrap, which you get by breaking spawners, we can make a quantum catcher. And we can move any mob with a quantum catcher. What else have we got here? We've got these obsidian skulls that uh, grant you immunity against fire damage. This one's for 30 seconds. The eternal one forever. We're going to be looking at this arcane bone meal pretty soon. Um, oh, and here's a sanity meter. You might notice that if you kill a lot of passive mobs, you get some bad effect like blindness um, or hear sounds like a ghast in the overworld. Uh, that's because you've been cursed by killing too many mobs that have aureal qualities and your sanity meter will show you what your sanity level is. I guess you've gone insane from killing too many good things. You can clean that with purifying soap. You'd get some purifying soap, uh, throw it in water to make it wet, and then you can wash your insanity away. So there's some there's some cool stuff. And, and then all these swords and, and armor, really powerful armor. But these are much later game stuff. Okay, we've got our last two needed dust or dust specs. And we can continue on from here, heading back into our Forbidden and Arcanus room. We can make mandibitor dust. For that, we're going to need a phantom membrane, blaze powder, gunpowder, bone meal. I'm forgetting right now. Let's dump a few of our things in here that we don't need and go get some redstone. I know we need redstone. Let's just look up mandibitor dust quickly. Blaze powder, gunpowder, Phantom Membrane, Redstone, Arcane, and Bone Meal. Let's just try making this over here. We need the Arcane Crystal Dust. So we need to make our specs into one dust. And now we can make Mandibid Mundibitor. And now we have four of those. With these four, we can do everything else we need to do. First thing up is activating this Klebano Core. Let's break this thing apart to see how it's made. It's not active right now. I haven't activated it yet. But this is the structure for it. It's polished darkstone and polished darkstone bricks, which we can make from darkstone in the stone cutter. And the top and bottom have this pattern. 
five dark stone bricks, polished dark stone bricks in a plus pattern and four polished dark stone in the corners. The next level is all bricks, polished dark stone bricks, except for right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The middle's hollow and this is where the Clivano core goes. And then the top is the same as the bottom. So I'll just give you a good look at this. Middle one is all polished dark stone bricks. The bottom and top look like this. Polished in dark stone in the corners. I must not have picked one up. There we go. And the fourth one right here. So polished dark stone in the corners. One, two, three, four. Missing one more. There it is. And five. And there's the structure. Now we just right click it with a Mundabiter dust. And we've got the, the forge now. Now this here can turn crystal into dust. You can process two things at once. And we just need some fuel. Have we got any fuel? We've got some planks. These are not the best, but that's okay. And it cooks these down into crystal dust. So we don't actually need to use those nipas anymore. Although we could automate those and get infinite crystals. And there's eight crystal dust. Now let's go get some gold. Just need one gold, I think. And we need some charcoal, which I think I've got some charcoal right here. And now we can craft a Deorum ingot. Two Mundabiter dust, two crystal dust, four charcoal, one gold ingot. And there we go. We've got a Deorum ingot. And if we put a Deorum ingot in the crafting table with one of these yellow orchids we found, we now have golden orchid seeds. And to plant golden orchid seeds, we need to create some magical farmland, which we get by using arcane bone meal on a piece of farmland. So we just need to make some arcane bone meal. For that, we need some bone meal with this dust. And we've got a bone meal factory going on right over here. Got a bunch of bone meal here. And we'll make a whole bunch. We'll make all of this. We've got 24 arcane bone meal. And now we take our arcane bone meal and we've got farmland right here. It needs to be next to water or this won't work. You right click and now we have magical farmland. This magical farmland is what we need to plant golden orchid seeds. Now this will just grow at its own pace or we can use arcane bone meal on it like this. And arcane bone meal will work on any crop and instantly grow it. And there we go. From one plant, we just got eight Deorum nuggets. And if we just hold down the right click with all this all this bone meal, we just got almost two stacks of Deorum nuggets. And just like that, 13 nuggets. And there you go. There's the way to make Deorum. One phantom membrane is all you need. And now that we have Deorum, we can progress on and make all of these arcane polished dark stone blocks that we need to get on to the Hephaestus Forge. Okay, now let's go look at the Hephaestus Forge. And that Hephaestus Forge, I've got already set up the multi-block structure in this room right here. It's basically a seven by seven square of polished dark stone with then three on each side to make that shape. And then in here is arcane chiseled plucked dark stone, nine of them, one in the middle and eight around the sides. And then four chiseled arcane polished dark stone uh, surrounding the middle one. And we've got everything we need right here. So we could, you know, to make the arcane chiseled polished dark stone, it's this one right here, chiseled pol polished dark stone with Deorum nuggets to get one of those. And so again, we need nine of those. And this chiseled arcane polished dark stone is made with these arcane polished dark stone slabs made by with this arcane polished dark stone, which is 
just polished dark stone around Deorum. So we need some Deorum. We get eight of those. Couple, three, couple Deorum to make this, this whole structure. And we take a smithing table. And we need to make a gavel, which is made with this gavel head out of clay. And once we have that, we just have any of these, in these ingredients. I'll make a, an iron one to get an iron gavel. And now to turn, to convert this into a Faceless Forge, we need a smithing table. And we take our last Mundabatur dust and shift right click. And there we go. We've got our Hephaestus Forge. And we right click on it. We've got all this stuff here. We need Oriel in this one. We need souls. We need blood and we need experience. And so we can put XP bottles in here for experience. To get blood, we need a ritual dagger and a vial of a test tube, I think, which we have somewhere. So here we have our test tube, a mystical dagger, and we're going to need the soul extractor as well. So to get souls, we need to use the soul extractor, which is pretty easy to make. It's just block some quartz from the nether, nether bricks, and an utrum jar, which is just made with glass and edelwood planks. It has to be edelwood planks to make this jar. And we just right click on soul sand and we get a soul. And we can put the soul in here. Now we're holding one soul. To get blood, we have to kill mobs with this mystical dagger while we're holding a test tube somewhere in our inventory. So let's go find some mobs. Oh, and we kind of skipped over making the test tube and uh, mystical dagger. Well, let's look at the test tube first. That's easy. It's basically a glass bottle and a rune. We get the runes from breaking this runic ores and, and deep slates. And the mystical dagger is a bit of a project. Uh, you need some day, two Deorum ingots, which we have, an Edelwood stick, which we get from just breaking one of these uh, branches on an Edelwood tree. We get a stick from that. We saw that earlier. Dark rune, two more of these runes with some corrupty dust. And corrupty dust you make from some of these things, which are all pretty easy to get. These ender pearl fragments we get from killing endermen. Um, you can put turn four of those into an ender pearl, uh, but we then Enderman drops those. Arcane Crystal Dust, Nether Wart, Blaze Powder. We've, we've been through all that stuff before. And Obsidian Ingot. You can get one of these from Mechanism, but it's really easy to make with Forbidden Arcanus. It's basically you craft an Obsidian with Iron. So Obsidian with four Iron Nuggets. You get this Obsidian with Iron. Put it in a Smelter, and you get Obsidian Ingot. So that's the Corrupty Dust with two runes to make the Dark Rune. And... This dark matter you just get by smelting uh, smelting one of these Edelwood logs. So just some crafting, all pretty easy to get. Um, you do have to go get some nether wart from a fortress. So that's the probably the probably the toughest part and the blaze. Okay, let's go get some mobs. Do we have any pigs around? They're usually hanging out in the lavender, and we've usually got yeah, we've got some squids over here. Let's okay. There's one squid. We got. 240 blood from that. And let's look at the Stella, the Eternal Stella. It tells us how much we need of each. We don't need any XP. We need 1,000 blood, one soul, and 82 Oriel. We've got 480 blood. So we're going to need to get a couple more mobs. There's never mobs when you want them. What's this up here? It's a horse. How much can we get from a horse? Oh, I'm getting... I don't have to kill it. All right, we won't kill the horse. How's that? We'll just get his blood. That's fine, right? Here's some cows. All right, that's 1,500. Perfect. Okay, now we put the blood right here, and it fills up with blood. The tricky one is this Oriole, which we need a potion of regeneration, which regeneration two, which I think we need 
Regeneration 2 needs Glowstone on Regeneration 1, which needs Gast Tier. I don't have any Gast Tiers, but there's another way to do this, which is to take a couple of Arcane Crystal Blocks and put it on top of Arcane Polished Darkstone, like this. And I think we hit this with Mundabadr Dust. We shift right click with Mundabadr Dust and we get this Arcane Crystal Obelisk. And this, if it's sitting on, I believe, one of these spots, it will start to fill it up. Oh, look at that, it is. All right, we're getting Oriole automatically. Good news. So we have to wait for that to get to 82. In order to craft with this, we need pedestals. And I have Darkstone pedestals here. And to make Darkstone pedestals, this is just more crafting with Arcane Darkstone stuff. So polished Darkstone slabs and this Arcane polished Darkstone pillar, which is a couple of these polished Darkstones, which is again, more of this Deorum ingots. So we're gonna need some more Deorum ingots for those. So you put these pedestals right here. And you can put up to eight, but these spots are gonna be taken up with the obelisk. We don't need all eight pedestals for the Eternal Stella recipe. Okay, while this Oriole is filling up, it's happening. Let's go get our ingredients that we need. And let's go break this Stella Arcanum. And we'll do that out here. Got a spot that's made especially for breaking the Stella Arcanum. I've got this Sky Stone spot right here. So if we put this Stella Arcanum in here and we get ourselves safely away, tucked over here so we can barely hit it, it's gonna explode. And we get a piece of Stellarite. And then we just need those three, just need those three X Petrified Orbs and we need one diamond. One diamond. And we'll get some X Petrified Orbs from our X Petrified Ore. We only need three. Nine's enough. And again, we look at the recipe. So three and Stellarite, three X Petrified Orbs, one Stellarite, and a diamond in the middle. So we put a diamond right here in the middle. And we put these things. There's the Stellarite. Here it is. Stellarite. One, two, three. I don't think it matters what shape they're in. It's just shapeless. We've got 56 so far. It needs 82, so this might not work. So if I shift right click with this gavel, no, it's not working. It doesn't have enough. We just need to wait another couple minutes. Okay, we've got the required amount of Oriole. I don't, it seems to be speeding up. So now if we right click with the hammer, there you go. We kick off this. I think with shaders on, we might be missing one of the visuals in the middle of the forge here. Like a magical kind of pentagram thing forms in the middle of this. Oh, or maybe there it is. No. So yeah, we were missing some of the visuals because we have shaders on, but now we have our eternal Stella. And with the Eternal Stella, we can right click on it and it will repair everything in our inventory. Let's just use it like that. So watch, if I right click, watch my tools down in the lower left. And my armor's regenerating. All my tools are regenerating their power. Everything is, everything's refreshed. You can see this thing counting up. So that's one way to use Stella. The other way is in a smithing table with anything and it will get an indestructible enchantment on it and it will, it will never, it'll never break. Now the Havasis Forge is not only good for forging or creating, crafting Eternal Stella. You can also, if we look up all the recipes for Havasis Smithing, we can do all of the vanilla enchantment books 
very easily with just some basic ingredients. So efficiency five, basically all of them. So piercing, sharpness three, the highest level. Here's the infinity book, the elusive infinity enchanted book. We'll be making that as soon as possible. Last thing I want to show you is the quantum catcher. Cause that's just really, really cool. Let's look at the recipe for the quantum catcher. And it's basically a spawner scrap and arcane crystal block. And we've got some arcane crystal here. Let's make a block. And behind this door, we have a couple of cave spider spawners. Now I've got fortune. I don't know if fortune works on this. Let's see. Two, two spawner scraps. So I don't know, we were either unlucky or it doesn't work, but we only need one. We need another smithing table. So a couple iron and some planks. We've got those things. Let's put the smithing table here for now. Spawner scrap and crystal block. We have a quantum catcher. Now let's go watch this thing work. We can literally capture any mob. And what I'm curious about is if we can capture this guy. But let's go try it out first on something lower stakes. I don't know if this is low stakes or not, but I wonder if we can catch this Enderman. Yep, we've got an Enderman. Will this make him mad? Nope, he's not mad. So we can catch anything. Let's go try it out on that gatekeeper. Because if we can get the gatekeeper, that means we can get villagers. We seem to have a gatekeeper captured. Let's shake him up. Put him down. All right. So here is a way to move villagers. Pretty cool. All right. Sorry, bud. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this episode. We have got ourselves Deorum ingots with minimal work, minimal crafting. We only had to kill one, well, enough phantoms to get one phantom membrane. Then we can grow all the Deorum we want from golden orchids. We also avoided the get, having to kill a ghast and find a ghast tier by creating that obelisk in, in the in the back there. We could probably pile more ob obelisks on here and get Oriel faster. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just scratching the surface of Forbidden and Arcanus, and they're working on, I happen to know, they're working on many more updates, all kinds of stuff coming. So we're going to continue to progress in Forbidden and Arcanus, especially as they continue development on this really cool mod. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time. I appreciate you.